What's up guys, in today's video, I'm gonna be doing a full walk around on my 2004 Ford F-150. If you guys have seen some of my previous videos, I've done a bunch of work to this truck, but I haven't actually made a video just showing you everything I've done from front to back. So that's what this video today is gonna be. But if you guys are new to my channel, you can go through and see a whole bunch of videos about both of my F-150s. I have two 2004 Ford F-150s. One is built into like a pre-runner, and this one was more of a daily driver. So go check those out if you wanna see more. Okay, so here is the first look at my F-150. So I'm just gonna start at the front, go all the way to the back, and then go over the interior with you guys. So for starters, it is an 11th gen F-150. It's a 2004, so it's the first year of this generation. It's an XLT with a 5.4 V8 Triton engine the three valve, which is notorious for having timing issues, which I did fix, and it has a little over 200,000 miles. So starting off in the front, you guys can see I have aftermarket headlights. These headlights are like a little bit of an updated look that have a black housing, and then they have like a modern sequential blinker built into it. So this strip right here is a running light and a blinker. I updated the grill to an aftermarket Ford style grill, so it's kind of like a Raptor knockoff grill. So these are running lights as well here in the grill that are all wired up to work and then the Ford lettering there. So I just put little four inch LED bars down where the fog lights were. So that's all wired into the factory fog light switch. And that's it as far as the body goes up here in the front. So coming around to the side, the next thing I'll point out to you guys is the wheels and tires. So these wheels are 18 inch wheels off of an Expedition. So if you guys didn't know, you can use wheels off an Expedition. They're six by 135, just like the F-150s. And then I just have some 32 inch Trail Finder all-terrains, which is just like discount tires, generic brand for all-terrain tires but they've been plenty for this truck and everything that we put them through. And then if you look down here, I just got some black lug nuts just to kind of spice it up a bit. And these things have just looked great on the truck. I actually get a ton of compliments on them and people asking where I got these wheels and they're off an expedition. So there's your answer. And the last thing up front will be the Rough Country two inch level spacer. So up there under the shock mount, there is an actual Rough Country spacer that's stacked up on top of the coilover. And that is what lifts the front end up two or two and a half inches. And that just kind of completes the stance. It makes it look nice and level out. The other thing up front is my windshield is actually completely tinted. FBI, open up! So I have, I believe, 50% tint on the entire windshield. I have darker on my other truck and I actually like the 50% much better. Just at nighttime, you can still see out pretty good and you're not squinting the entire time you're driving if you gotta wear glasses like me. So the next thing down here are these Ford Raptor running boards. So these are off a of Gen 1 Raptor and these actually bolted right onto my truck. So I found these and I picked them up, just put some fresh coating on them and then bolted them straight up to where your factory running boards would go. And these have been super awesome. So I got these on both sides, Gen 1 running boards. And then coming around the side, not too much out. I always add these goofy little blind spot mirrors on all my mirrors so that's kind of a cool little mod that I just do to everything for some reason now keep coming down the side the next thing you're gonna see is this soft top roll-up tonneau cover and then also that aftermarket third brake light up there the tonneau cover has been super awesome it's like having a giant trunk on the back so you're able to put a bunch of stuff under there and just cover it all up and know that it's nice safe and secure that third brake light has kind of sucked it already started leaking water and it looks kind of faded so that out of all the lights has held up the worst and then talking about lights still now these tail lights these tail lights have actually held up the best they have no signs of wear whatsoever they're still super bright these also have like the modern like c bar light that goes back here this bracket style led light that's built into it and then everything stock back here is this truck has backup sensors and then i added a backup camera that i'll show you guys once we go inside and look at the stereo back here i did a spray in bed liner i used a raptor liner kit like a diy kit and then swinging out right here is literally a swing case toolbox so this is a lockable toolbox that just mounts on the side of your bed. It has this arch built into it so it goes over your wheel well. That way it doesn't take up too much space. So it just clicks right in there. You have a lock right here that you can lock it in and you just pull this latch and it swings right out so you can stand on the side of your tailgate and get to all of your tools. So it's pretty big. You can see down there it's empty right now. I take everything out. It's got a couple compartments, closes right up and locks in place. And this thing actually doesn't wiggle or make any noise on the inside of the cab. That's the question I always get is like, can you hear it? Is it, is it loose? Does it wiggle? And it does not. So that's it back here. I'll show you guys how this tonneau cover works. There's a little release latch right here. So you pull this and it unlocks from these latches right there. So you just flip it down and then it's back secure. And if you need to use your bed, you just roll this thing all the way up to the top. And then there's a little strap that you hook on and it'll hold it up there all rolled up. So same exact thing on this side. The only thing that's different is obviously the antenna. So I always pull off my super long goofy antennas and just get a short stubby off Amazon and just throw those things on there. I think it looks a lot better aesthetically. So I replaced the antenna on everything that I own pretty much. The other cool thing I'll show you before we go inside is the remote start. So you hold that button down, see the lights light up. After a little sequence on those lights, it'll crank over. 
So remote start has been super awesome, especially living in Vegas. You can get the AC running before you get out and get in the truck. And if you did it on accident, you could hold it down and shut it back off. So power locks hooked up to this little remote with the remote start. Okay, so next thing is gonna be the interior. So on the interior, I just did some cheap fake leather seat covers on the back seat and on each of the front seats. They're a little over two years old now, and I say they held up pretty good. They have a couple of small nicks, but nothing I'm too worried about. So these things are still hanging on, still looking good. A lot cheaper than buying cat skins or something like that. Obviously not as good a quality. You can see like this fabric is all stretched out and didn't stay tucked under there how I had it originally, but I'd say pretty good for the price. And then I just got some generic rubber floor mats on the front and back just to help keep the carpet a little more clean. This truck came with like one of those old school DVD players that flips out up here, which I actually have bought some DVDs for my daughter to watch. Just get her off the iPad and put some movies on every so often. So it'll flip down right here and you have your screen and then you can put your DVD in over here and then there's some headphones that hook up to it or you can play it through the car speaker as it gives like a FM radio frequency for the sound. So coming in here now, I'll show you guys the radio. So this is an actual like Android tablet. It's like a 10 inch tablet. So you can have like Spotify and your email and all this kind of stuff built into here, YouTube, Netflix. Now when you first get in, you'll have radio and you could use Spotify offline. So you can download your playlist and listen to them. But if you want to use the actual web, you have to hook up to a hotspot. So either have hotspot in your car or I just use the hotspot off my phone, hook it up and then I have access to all the apps. And then what I did, instead of wiring my backup camera to the reverse lights, I actually put a switch so you can turn on the camera at any time. So even if you're driving forward, you can turn on the camera and see behind you and then just use that switch and shut it back off. And then with this radio, I actually replaced all the door speakers with some Skosh speakers, just a small upgrade from Walmart, nothing too fancy. So all the door speakers are replaced. And then I also got a 10 inch dual subwoofer from Walmart. Nothing too fancy. It's all wired underneath the carpet up to that radio. Pretty cool. It's just enough bass to sound better than stock and just give a little bit of a thump back here without spending too much money. And it has a built in amplifier so you don't have to worry about too much crazy wiring. And then also there is two USBs that I have down here that hook up to this radio so you can hook up your phone straight to the radio from there. So this truck is actually not too crazy. It's a lot of bolt-on parts, a lot of stuff that you can do yourself at home just in the driveway. You don't even need a garage or any crazy tools. And even though I've done a lot of work to the truck, I'd still call it pretty reliable. So the first summer that I had the truck, I took it on a road trip all the way to Colorado from Las Vegas, Nevada. And as soon as I got into town, I heard a whirring noise from the rear end. And I actually blew out some bearings in the differential. So I had to get that rebuilt while I was out there. Then it ran great for another year, but it always sounded like a diesel while I was running. So I knew I had to do the timing job and these trucks are notorious for having that issue. So I did a whole timing kit with new roller followers and a high volume oil pump. And that remedied all the diesel noises and helped me feel a lot more comfortable about driving the truck long term with over 200,000 miles. The other thing I had to do was replace the AC compressor, AC condenser, and the orifice tube. I only had a bad AC compressor, but I figured living in Las Vegas, let me just replace everything at one time. I also had to replace the radiator because I had a transmission leak. There's a transmission cooler that's built into the side of the radiator and it's all one piece. So I bought a whole new radiator. And then I just recently replaced the front rotors and brake pads in all four corners. And then the most recent thing I did was replace the oil pan gasket because that started to leak and that is also remedied. So for being an almost 20 year old truck, I'd actually say that that's not too bad. Most of the stuff was pretty simple to do. The most complicated being the timing job that I did myself and then getting the rear end rebuilt. I actually had a shop do that in Colorado since I was on a trip. So if you're wondering about everything that was done to my truck, hopefully this video helped answer that question. I got a ton of other videos on my channel with both of my trucks. If you guys have any questions about this truck or my other truck, let me know down below in the comments. I got a Facebook group called F-150 Pre-Runner slash Off-Road. Everything that I use on most of my cars, you can find links to either eBay or Amazon or just wherever I got it from in the description. You guys can follow me on Instagram at Just King Adrian, and I'll see you guys in the next video. Peace.